Hi, I'm Boris the Bee Guy from Forest Beehive Apiary, located in central Maine on the shores of this peaceful secluded forest lake next to 3,000 acres of woodlands and meadows of a wildlife sanctuary. We are miles away from industrial and agricultural pollution, we have sufficient spring-to-fall foraging resources for our bees, and we don't use any supplemental sugar feedings. We also don't use any human-engineered chemical treatments or even organic pest control substances in and around our beehives. Although during this winter the temperatures here at times were lower than minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit, that is minus 31 degrees Celsius, all of our bee colonies have overwintered well. And you can see that they are now bringing pollen, which is protein that they feed their young brood with. The color of pollen that they are bringing now is almost exclusively light yellow, which may indicate that it came from American alder trees that are in bloom at this time. I took this picture of American alder tree within a few hundred yards of the apiary. No leaves yet, but you can see male yellowish flowers covered with yellow pollen. It's spring now, and just like last spring, I'm setting up swarm traps to attract wild survivor honeybee swarms so that I could expand my apiary with wild survivor bee colonies that are already familiar with local nectar flows and are likely to have developed local pest resistance based on their own Darwinian way of natural selection. I never buy commercial bee packages with artificially inseminated queens that need continuous chemical pest control treatments. To start the apiary, I purchased bee nukes, that is nuclear colonies, from another local treatment-free beekeeper. I set up two kinds of swarm traps with deep layance frames. The conventional kind and what I would call the redneck special kind, as in the picture. The conventional swarm traps are built with echo plywood, metal corners and aluminum roof. While for the redneck specials, I used food grade plastic containers, zip ties, duct tape and just some odd pieces of echo plywood. Both kinds of swarm traps are set up the exact same way, with standard layance frames of old dark brood comb, propolis, lemongrass essential oil in slow-release plastic tubes, and even a few dead winter bees, so that the traps smell and feel like old abandoned beehives. For me, despite not so pleasing aesthetics, the advantages of the redneck special swarm traps are their low cost and lightweight. I'm eagerly expecting the bees' verdict, however, on which kind of swarm trap will work the best this year. In my first spring inspections, I'm making sure that my bee colonies have sufficient food and that they have started with rearing their brood. This is a frame with food, capped honey band on top. This is a frame with capped brood cells, that's light brown paper-like cells in the middle. The bees have overwintered in a smaller third of a 20-frame beehive, containing just six frames, flanked on both sides by divider boards and topped with a sackcloth pillow filled with natural wool. Overwintering in a smaller area allowed the bees to conserve their resources by not heating a whole wide area of the hive in wintertime when there were fewer bees. Now that the number of bees in spring is increasing again, I'm again expanding the number of frames this time gradually, every couple of weeks. I will expand the bees' brood nest area located right next to the open entrance on the right and also expand the honey stores area, which is the farthest from the open entrance. For now, I'm expanding both areas by one frame each. Here, the frame with the dark comb was the original brood frame that came from the same hive during late fall when I was narrowing down the beehive area for wintering. And now, I will be putting the same frame back in. Here you can see our Queen Alice, the one marked with a yellow crown, a queen bee moving among her worker bees. This colony came from a local treatment-free beekeeper whose bees were a mix of swarm-caught wild survivor bees and USDA VSH bees. VSH stands for Varroa Sensitive Hygiene, a genetic trait in honeybees that enables the colony to survive without artificial mite controls. The SHBs usually interfere with mite reproduction by uncapping and then recapping mite-infested cells. You may notice that Queen Alice and her bees are mostly dark gray. This is probably because Queen Alice has some genetics linking her to the original North European dark bees that were introduced by settlers to North America way back in the 1620s. Those bees quickly became feral and multiplied in great numbers all over North America. 
North European dark bees are also known as German dark bees, and the name Alice is of German origin, meaning noble, which fits Our Majesty Queen Alice perfectly. In this picture, both Queen Elizabeth II and Queen Alice are in matching yellow outfits, and for Queen Alice, the yellow is related to her year of birth, 2022. While Queen Elizabeth II died in 2022, Queen Alice was born in 2022. As queen bees do not live more than five years, according to a long-standing international queen bee marking convention, only five solid colors are used to mark the queen bees by their year of birth. A picture below shows that for the first five years of each decade, starting with year one, the solid colors with which the queen bees are marked change each year from white to yellow to red to green to blue. And for the second part of the decade, starting with year six and ending with the tenth, the five bee marking colors again repeat themselves, white, yellow, red, green, blue. A good system of mnemonics to remember the sequence of these five repeating colors and figure out the age of the queen is based on the starting letter of each color and goes as follows in the form of a question. Will you raise good bees? To answer this question, I'm largely delegating raising good bees to each of my queen bees, including Queen Alice, by hosting the bees within this wonderland of unspoiled woodlands and meadows adjacent to 3,000 acres of state-owned wildlife sanctuary, where the worker bees have rich natural spring-to-fall foraging. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe.